Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to part two, the advanced BMS ECM tutorial. Please watch the first one that goes over the basics. It's in the description below. Overview, we're going to talk about the ECM vertical coverage, the panel operation, tactical uses, and some ECM tips. ECM vertical cover coverage, so I've done a couple of calculations. So as the aircraft is level, there is a, a line that goes here at five degrees. That's where the, the coverage starts degrading. So after five degrees, all the way up to 15 degrees, it transition and slowly goes to not not uh, not being able to cover it at all. So in this chart up here, I extrapolated five degrees up. So at 18 miles, you need to be 10,000 feet above your the jamming target to be able to be outside of that 100% zone in the five degrees. And so on up here, 36 miles out, you need to be 20,000 feet. 45 miles out, you need to be 25,000 feet. So this five degrees up is actually very, very effective, even in straight and level. That does not include if the aircraft is pointing upwards to, to loft the missile or look up at you. So if that happens, they're going to be up 10, 20 degrees, so you'll be within this, this window anyway. So this is only if the aircraft is straight and level. So with that being said, if someone is below you, don't expect for their jammer to be less than yours because they'll be either pointing upwards and you'll still be in that, that cone of, of coverage there. So the ECM panel operation, going into detail here. So if you look into the, the Dash 3-4, you'll have more information on that. Also in the threat guide, you'll have all the information here. So programs 1 through 5, program 1 covers low bands, A, B, and C. And then if you move over here, program 2 covers D and E. 3 is F and G, and so on and so forth. Each cover different bands. Each band, band has their own associated threats. So with this here, A, B, and C, so you got A, B, and C. So you got A is the spoon rest, B, and then C has the, the fan song, and the, the 50, which is a search radar for the Hawk. And then program 2 is D and E, bands D and E. It's the Hawk um, fire control radar, the Nike, and, and, the, and the 3, SA-3. And E has all those, and I won't go over all of these, but this is all of them in there. It's in the threat guide. So the programs here, there's five programs. If two programs are transmitting, they'll take 50% of the total power. If you have three programs transmitting, they'll take 33% of the total power, and so on and so forth. If you have all of them, then they'll each have 20% of the total power of the transmit of the pod. In Falcon BMS 4.37 Update 2, Air-to-air -air missiles now have home on jam, so if you have your your jammer on, the missile will be able to find you, even though the launcher launching aircraft lost lock and no longer provides data link. So keep that in mind when you're going cold. Make sure you turn off your jammer. If you are low level, you can turn off program four, which is the the H and I band. So H is F14. And then I is fighters, so if you turn off the I band, you won't be coming up as jamming for, for fighters, just in case they, 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 won't, they won't have any reason to look down there because there's no jamming targets. Here are some tactical uses. Exhibit 1 could be used during a low attack. After the attack, the aft attenda can transmit while flowing cold. I don't usually use this, but that's one of my ideas that it could be used for. Exhibit 2, which is my personal favorite, and is com more commonly used. It covers forward and aft of the aircraft. Use this, I use the CMS switch to turn on and off as needed. So if I see something spiking me, I will turn it on and it'll it'll jam forward and backwards. If I need it to be off, I just press CMS uh, right to put it in standby, and I use that as an on and off for my my jammer. Xmit three is could be used as a last ditch effort to jam. If you don't know which program it is, you can just put Xmit three. It'll jam everything, uh, every program that you have have selected. On your panel. So general tips: uh, only use the jammer when needed. Don't blanketly use it because you'll you'll someone will be able to see your general location. Uh, turn it on when you have nails, spike, mud, or dirt. So once you get nails, uh, for me, I usually wait till spike. Once I get a spike, I turn on my jammer, and, and it usually the spike transitions from a uh, spike to a nails, and they may or may not have launched already, and it kind of degrades them from getting another launch. You don't want to prematurely give away your position if you're blanket blanket jamming in, in certain certain bands like the fighter band they'll see you in a general location your wingman have radar as well so if your ECM is picking up the radar of your wingman it could also start jamming thus putting you on as a, a 
basically giving away your position to someone else in the the to the enemy. So expanding on the ECM tips, so both uh, degrade your FCR and harm capabilities, XMIT 2 and 3. If you have problems locking someone up, CMS right, STT, and then CMS aft. This helps with maintaining a lock, so you have so you want to lock first, S, go STT, single target track, and then turn on your jammer. It might help you maintain that lock. Wait until you have nails before you give consent to your jammer. I usually wait till a spike. Wait till you are locked also as well to turn on your jammer, but you need a fire and turn out early. So if you get locked on and you turn on your jammer, make sure you launch, but you might have to turn off a little bit earlier than, than what you're used to. Elevation, try to stay above your opponent. Don't be below your opponent. If you are below your opponent, you could try pitching upwards to expand your ECM coverage so they could be within that, that window of the ECM transmit area. And that's just about it for the ECM tips. Hopefully you like this advanced version. If you have not seen the basic one, go back and uh, watch it in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.